Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Caitlin here and today I'm going to be doing a university themed video today. So today I'm going to be telling you guys my tips and tricks and my do's, my don'ts for starting university and just things which I have learnt over my last two years at uni. Also, this video is really exciting for me as it is in collaboration with the Royal Bank of Scotland. So I will be letting you guys know what they can offer you in a minute if you're a student like me. And there will also be a link left in the description box for you guys to check out. So I really hope that you enjoy this video and you find it helpful. Please leave a like and also subscribe if you are new to my channel and haven't subscribed already. And without further ado, I will get into all my do's and don'ts for starting university. So my first tip for starting university, which you should really do before you begin, is change your bank account to a student account with good student benefits. This is something which I didn't do in my first year of university and I messed out on a ton of great things which you are offered as a student. So for example, a huge benefit which you can gain by setting up a student account with the Royal Bank of Scotland is you get a National Express coach card. This means when you're a student and you're traveling to meet friends at other universities or you're maybe just traveling to go home for the weekend, you can get a third off all National Express tickets. And also the card gets you 10% off to festivals, to events, and also around Europe. So if you're traveling throughout your summer holiday, you're still able to make full use of your student benefits and get discounted travel over the summer holidays. Also, continuing on with my first tip, you need to make sure that you have mobile banking. This is something that is so essential when you're a student because it makes your life so much easier for paying bills, transferring your friends if you owe each other money, and also you can keep track on how you're spending, which is obviously super important when you're budgeting during your university year. Also, if you happen to forget your card with the Royal Bank of Scotland, you're still able to withdraw up to £130 using their Get Cash feature at Tesco, NatWest and Royal Bank of Scotland ATMs. So if you don't have your card on you, you're totally fine because you can still take out money, which is so, so handy. And I know that my friend didn't have her card on her on her birthday and she definitely made very good use of the get cash feature with the Royal Bank of Scotland because she needed money to celebrate her birthday with. My tip number two is do not buy your books immediately and also do not buy them from the university's stores. You can find them 10 times cheaper online. A lot of the time I actually find that my books are free online. You just download a PDF copy or you can buy them secondhand from eBay and also, a lot of the time, you don't actually need the book. I would recommend definitely waiting at least a week into the semester to suss out how often your lecturer is using the textbook. When I took accounting last year, I never bought a single textbook because we barely even use the textbook and it was one of my highest grades that I got at the end of the year so I was able to obviously survive without it. Obviously if there is a textbook that is essential then you're gonna have to buy it but I would definitely recommend waiting maybe a week just to suss out where you can get it from, how you can get it cheaper or even if you need it at all. My tip number three is make sure you know your stuff on overdraft. Overdraft is something which you might not need in the first couple months at uni because you probably have your savings or your student loan coming through and you're probably going to be okay but the time that it's going to creep up on you and become a problem is probably during the end of term when you have exams on and that is the worst time to have the added stress of organising overdraft when you need it. So with the Royal Bank of Scotland, they have flexible interest-free overdraft of up to £500 in your first term and up to £2,000 from then on. But one thing with overdraft is you do have to be over 18 to get it. So if you are going to be under 18 before you go to uni, like I was, then just make sure you're on top of your finances until then. Tip number four is go to orientation. A lot of the 
time orientation is actually kind of useless but I would highly recommend still going because it's a chance to meet new people. A lot of the friends which I have now at uni are people who I met on my very first day in orientation and also going to orientation just lets you get used to the campus and makes you more familiar with it so you're a little bit less lost on your first day. Even if it's long and boring definitely go and just get your face recognised so you have some friendly faces to say hello to on your first day at uni. Also it's a good chance to be able to join societies and sports teams which you don't want to miss out on because it's really difficult to join later in the year. Tip number five is something which is pretty important to me and that is to take your first semester to try out different places to study to find your most productive spot. Revising at home or in your halls can be pretty distracting sometimes because all your friends are living there. If you spend the time throughout semester one trying different places, it means when you get to your exam revision time, you're not wasting time being unproductive in certain areas. So for me, my most productive spot is the cafe in the business school at Edinburgh. So if you want to find me, that will be where I'm at during exam time. You might find that the library is not your favourite spot. So go ahead and try different places and find your productive little zone. My tip number six is do not waste your spare time doing nothing between classes. A lot of the time at university in the UK, you have a lot of free time. I remember in my first year at uni, I had a class at nine in the morning and then I had a class at five in the evening. So I had a massive gap where I had no classes. So I would recommend using that time. I mean, it might not be as long as I had, but just make sure you make the most of those few hours between classes. And that way, when you go home in the evening, you can completely relax. Also for me, I find that I am most productive during the day. And when it gets to the evening time, I am just super lazy and I want to watch Netflix. So I always made sure I got my work out the way during the daytime because realistically, I would never have got it done in the evening time. Tip number seven is go to class even when the notes are posted online. It is so tempting to just not bother going to class because you know you can do it in your own free time but realistically you probably won't end up doing it in your free time. Always go to class even if it's boring and you end up kind of falling asleep towards the end at least you've been and you have a general idea of what is going on in the course. It is really tempting to not keep up with notes if you are not going to lectures. Even if you do end up actually doing it in your free time, it probably will take you a lot longer and you might not understand it as well because you've not had a lecturer there to fully explain it to you. So just always go to classes and you'll end up with less stress and cramming when you get to revision time. And my final tip number eight is to try and meet as many people as you can in the first week. Now this doesn't mean that you're going to end up being best friends with all these people but by just being friendly and polite to as many people as you can means that you just have more people that you feel familiar with. I don't know if this makes sense but a good example of this is I met a girl in my first week of uni when I was in first year and I never spoke to her again for a whole one and a half years and then last semester when I was revising for my exams I bumped into her and just because we knew each other's names we knew each other's faces because of back then and freshers week we started talking and we ended up revising together for our exam just back then at the start of summer and that would never have happened if we hadn't said hello to each other in the very first week of uni. So just make sure you're as friendly and polite to as many people as possible because you never know who you're gonna end up speaking to again. You never know who you're gonna end up sitting next to or being in a class with. So just be a friendly face to everyone because you have more opportunity to make friends in the future if they know your face and your name. So guys, those were all my tips, do's and don'ts for starting university. I really hope that you found this video helpful and definitely check out the Royal Bank of Scotland if you're looking to set up a student account for heading off to uni. There will be a link in the description for you guys to check out. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe down there and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye guys!